Behold the humble handoff, a coordination item that is overused, underappreciated, taken for granted, and totally overworked. When you observe air traffic control from a third party observation point or from a giant scope, right? Put on the glasses and take a look at the whole system. Handoffs make up a giant percentage of the ebb and flow of our operation. They are the unsung hero of air traffic control. Otherwise, we would be left to deal with manual coordination and the pause and secession of radar services as an aircraft makes its way from sector to sector, facility to facility, center to center, approach to center, center to approach. We just take it for granted. It's a given that we will always have this type of coordination and that we've always had this type of coordination to facilitate traffic. Now here in San Juan's a different story. We are surrounded by facilities where we do manual coordination. And this presentation is focused on how handoff procedures have come about between us, San Juan Center, and Santa Domingo. Now we have radar to radar handoffs with Miami Center, flight level 200 and above, where it's a simple click and slew and enter, and the interfaces talk to each other. But today, this presentation focusing on the Santa Domingo and San Juan boundary, we are going to talk about manual handoffs and how to perfect that and how, from a D side or radar associate perspective, how you can fine tune and help out facilitate this awesome coordination that we use oh so much. And you will have a newfound appreciation for the way we conduct business at the San Juan and Santa Domingo boundary. Really excited. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for clicking on this video. Steve here welcoming you back. Look at that wonderful picture of the slew of airplanes worthy of you to work and vice versa. So I cannot wait to dive into this. Let's go to the bulleted list and let's get underway. I'll see you there. How many times have you been on the D side or preview of things that come when you're on the D side and that rhetorical question, are they handed off from the R side or something like that? You know, Open for you to help out. That's your cue to say, hey, maybe this is something that I should be doing on the regular as part of my radar associate uh, regimen, my repertoire, what I have to offer the sector. So let's think about this in terms of bulleted uh, items here. So terminology, phraseology, and strip marking Hooray, wonderful. That is exciting, and we will cover some of that today. Go over the manual handoff procedures and process between Santa Domingo and us, and vice versa. We'll play the roles of both and kind of talk about how the 7110 and the LOA kind of applies to this process, even though Santa Domingo is a non FAA, non national airspace system facility. So we will do our best to bridge that gap. Learn some peculiarities about manual handoffs between San Juan and Santa Domingo as outlined in the LOA. As you know, we'll be referring to ADE, the automatic data exchange between our two facilities. So we won't go in depth into ADE. We will just highlight some of the um, more important uh, keynote uh, concepts of ADE and how it facilitates and how it is able to uh, present to us this wonderful handoff, manual handoff tool. Improve your radar associate skills. We are always looking to do that. If you are a radar associate, whether you're going downstairs in the lab or you are now up on the floor and starting your uh, OJT, well, welcome. And this will be good for you. And if you're a radar controller, you just want some review on how things work, maybe dig a little deeper into what the 7110 says about handoffs because it's quite a uh, large, um, body of work in chapter five of the 7110, the radar chapter. So no, never hurts going back to seeing that. So this is best left to be illustrated at the sector level. So in typical ready, set, heavy jet fashion, we will be there and we'll take a sample aircraft and we will just plop in place all kind of fun little nuggets for you to enjoy uh, taken from the source material, facility directives, the 7110 LOA, et cetera, et cetera. So with that being said, really excited here to the sector, ready, set, and jets go. I will uh, see you at the sector eight. For your information, if you are interested in learning the entire concept uninterrupted of the transfer of radar identification as outlined in chapter five of the 7110, I would suggest that you watch this video, then watch, observe, and report. 
the video about the handoff's younger sibling, the point out, and all the procedures and methods that follow that, traffic, traffic observed, all kind of fun stuff and scenarios and practice that you can do in that presentation. Or you watch uh, that one first and make your way back to this one to learn about handoffs and continue that dive into the transfer of radar identification. Lots of fun to be had. The body of text were so large and so intricate that each one deserved its own video respectively, which is good because it shortens up the time and you can make the concepts become sequential and compartmentalized. So with that being said, we are here in Sector 8, United 660, level of flight level 280, and we have the associated flight progress trip. Now, any center, whether it's an FA facility to an FA facility, NAS facility to a NAS facility, that shares a common boundary and is going to outline how we are going to conduct business when aircraft transfer the boundary between our two facilities, that is usually outlined in the first paragraph. It's usually broad, and it's just laying down the baseline ground rule saying, hey, we have to let each other know about aircraft that are transferring our boundaries. Awesome. So if you were to look at the San Juan and Santa Domingo letter of agreement, you will find such a paragraph. Now, obviously, I kind of shortened it or long elongated it, however you want to look at it. So the baseline ground rules are laid out. Now, the subsequent paragraphs are going to address how we do it. What tools do we have at our disposal? Um, contingency. Uh, what if this happens? You know, the X, Y, Zs to the operation. That's what's going to be outlined. So without further ado, we learn about this aspect. As per the letter of agreement, primary coordination, transfer of control point must be a common boundary fix. Easy enough. The named fixes that make up our boundary with Santa Domingo and us, San Juan Center. VA handoff, awesome, more on that in a second, which must be affected on all aircraft at least one zero miles. As you see there, one zero miles prior to the transfer, correction, transfer of control point, huh, it's a tongue twister, or common boundary. So as you see there, we outline not to scale 10 miles, so that's where the handoff has to be done. Now, as you see, we said in the bulleted list that we would talk about ADE. So fun fact, if you were to go to the attachments in the letter of agreement, go to attachment five, there we have almost a crash course in automatic data exchange and the methods and procedures on how that is rolled out. The one you need to be concerned about is the San Juan current flight plan, the CPL. What you're looking at on that flight progress trip, that the CPL will be sent to Santa Domingo not less than one zero minutes, 10 minutes, from the boundary, and that's 421C. It's vice versa. You'll get a flight plan from Santa Domingo 10 minutes prior to them estimating the common boundary. So if you look at the time and you look at the boundary estimate, we know that Santa Domingo has a flight plan. Now, as you see, the handoff has to be done at least 10 miles out. Knowing that the flight plan is sent 10 minutes prior to the boundary, and if aircraft are generally going eight miles a minute, which United 668 might be. They were climbing at some point in time a few minutes ago, so they may not be up to speed at that point in time. But right around that 80 mile mark, you know, eight miles a minute, 10 minutes, we understand that Santa Domingo probably has the flight plan. You can deduce that. And we also know we always have the RF key, the force radar transfer key, which you can always use and send a flight plan to Santa Domingo at any time. But this in spirit of things being automated and being totally automatic, let's just pretend that we are in a sweet spot here to hand off the aircraft. And we are. In all reality, this is somewhere where you'd like to hand off the aircraft. Not quite violating 10 minutes or getting close to that threshold and not being too early because some things might change. They might request an altitude uh, change or possibly uh, a deviation for weather or a turn or something that you might have to amend some flight data because this ADE is not totally limited to the sharing of uh, just a simple handoff, but any flight data for that matter, that entire flight plan, everything that you see presented to you in those boxes and those blocks and the blocks that we don't see is being shared with Santa Domingo. So just a fun fact, a little reminder about automatic data exchange. So now that we have all those constants and those givens understood, we are now 
and a position to hand this aircraft off. We can assume looking at the time, boom, there's the time, 2108, 2112, we're well within uh, the 10 minutes and we are well within the 10 miles to make the handoff. We are in a really good spot right now to hand this aircraft off. So let's go to the next slide and pick up uh, where we are going to leave off. I will see you there. Back at the sector now, we froze ourselves in time. United 660 has not moved an inch and the flight progress trip is still there. All things are still constant. Now, the concept of a handoff, it might seem blatantly obvious. This might even be a review for you from the Academy, but we are talking about a manual handoff. And we didn't do too many of those at the Academy, if you remember. Sometimes the interface was down with Houston Center and we were Aero Center, but I believe that was only a couple of problems. So, 542 in the 7110 handoff, an action taken to transfer the rare identification of an aircraft from one controller to another controller. If the aircraft went through the receiving controller's airspace and radio communication with the aircraft will be transferred. Perfect. This describes what United 668 will do and what we as the controller giving United 668 668 services will do. United 668 is going to San Domingo's airspace. We are going to transfer rare identification and the communications of the aircraft. We no longer have to talk to the aircraft. They're going onwards to Houston, westbound. It is now time for Santa Domingo to take over the granting of air traffic control services and the wonderful services that they provide in the Dominican Republic, which is awesome. Boom. That takes us to the next paragraph to outline how we will do this. Transfer the radar identification of an aircraft by at least one of the following methods. Now, the other two methods didn't apply because we do not have a keystroke, like an automatic or automated way to do it. And we cannot jump over to the island of Hispaniola, go to the Santo Domingo airport, go to the control center and actually point on their scope and say, hey, hand off United 668. That is terribly inefficient. So we have to deal with number two. So I left one and three out to use landline voice communication. Awesome. As outlined in the San Juan and Santa Domingo letter of agreement, it says that we will use the dedicated shout line and uh, you will use that. So with that being said, now you have some of the tools here, AD is taking care of the automatic part of it. You have the landline, which is good, which is afforded to you by that chapter. And here is a shortened uh, paragraph on how we will complete this handoff, the phraseology aspect. Issue in the following order, the position of the target, aircraft call sign or beacon code, altitude info, and any other pertinent information. Now remember, the position is explained heavily in 543 and it's going to talk about you looking for a fix or the position of the aircraft relative to a fix that is known to both controllers that is on the video map it's a reference point that's something everybody knows but if you read that paragraph and you go down a little bit it starts to mention a full data block when a full data block is shown is displayed on the receiving controllers display you do not have to state the mileage. You just have to state a general position, which is what we just described in the shortened version. Because when ADE, when that 10 minute timer comes up, it sends the flight plan and the nature of Santa Domingo's automation system called Top Sky will have the track, the actual raw radar data pair with the flight plan information and create an auto acquisition, just like we have here with micro ERs. When the aircraft departs, there is an associated beacon code in the tab list, and micro, micro ERs is like, hey, I know that guy. Boom, the auto acquisition takes place. So rest assured that if for some reason auto acquisition does not take place, you can oftentimes expect a follow-up question from Santa Domingo saying, say squawk or can you i don't see him or something like that you might have to give a little bit more of an exact position but more often than not they get the same squawk code we're sharing it and they're able to see a full data block on their top sky display santa domingo san juan center 
or correction, Santa Domingo Center, Maya, San Juan Center handoff, because it is nice that we often identify ourselves as which sector we are. Now, that usually only states in the LOA if we're talking about Punta Cana, when Punta Cana approach control is open. It does not actually specify we have to do with the center, but it's not a bad practice, so I just threw it in there. You could read the LOA and make that decision yourself. Santa Domingo, east of Antex, United 60 State Flight Level 280. United 668 radar contact. Wonderful. Now, as you know, in paragraph 238, we're going back to general stuff in terms of flight progress trips, control information symbols. When you circle the R, it means that the radar identification process, this handoff is complete and Santa Domingo has taken radar identification on the aircraft. Now, 545 and the transfer of air identification in chapter five has a lot of caveats and requirements just in case if you had to give Santa Domingo any restrictions with the aircraft, anything changed, any other pertinent information, heading, altitude information that is not in the data block now or not on your flight progress trip, anything that you feel that they should know prior to giving communications changeover, you should be stating that and giving that information. Now we can give United 668 and hand them off to Santa Domingo with peace of mind because there is nothing precluding us from doing it. But if there was weather and they were deviating and when able proceeding direct, maybe uh, Cabo Rojo, or if they immediately request an altitude change to say flight level 320 in the middle of all this coordination procedure when we're on the line, we can give this information in the handoff. It's actually really convenient because it does not require us to make an additional separate call or make an additional coordination item anywhere. We, at the tail end of this coordination, at the end of this handoff, we are able to give anything that is important that both parties should know. And if you read 4545, five, you will find an exhaustive list of all those things. And it's just making sure that the target we're referring to is correlated with the beacon code and a whole bunch of other processes that you should go over. And it's worth a read, just a general read. But this simple process here with the arrows and the strip marking and the phraseology and the uh, shout line, this is it. This is a handoff and very simple. If you understand what uh, the variables are, you know, the time, the mileage, the phraseology, just about everything else that you have to include in the coordination. And this will be rattling off your tongue in no time. So fantastic job with that. And this is complete. The aircraft is good to go. And the 7110 will also say, try not to waste too much time uh, you know, after radar identification has been transferred to, if this aircraft is truly clear of conflicts and you require no further communications with this aircraft, just send them on their way. So you can tell the R side or the R side will see that the handoff is completed via that nonverbal coordination there on the strip. And you are doing great and you are the star of this radar team. So fantastic job with that. That is Sam Juan giving Santa Domingo a handoff now. We are going to reverse it and we are going to learn how to accept handoffs from Santa Domingo, which you will be doing as well as a radar associate. So, so far, so good. Great job. Adding a little bit of complexity to the mix here. This is almost taking a note from Observe and Report where we were talking about traffic and referencing traffic in response to a handoff, but just a little piece of advice. Understanding that we have this relatively new handoff procedure with Santa Domingo. At the time of this video's publication, it's not even a year old yet. We've been doing radar handoffs and automatic data exchange with Santa Domingo. Some of the phraseology and concepts, such as traffic and tra traffic observed, is not a universal air traffic control concept uh, throughout all air navigation service providers. So sometimes if you were to say traffic in response to a handoff, you will not always get the response you are looking for because I don't know if Santa Domingo controllers understand the concept of traffic and traffic observed. So sometimes just remember that this is the way we'll deal with it when we do have a traffic situation here. Well, if you're scanning, you see we might have something here brewing. 
we will not be saying traffic and traffic observed. That was just a long way of saying that. So just don't expect that because we could in this instance, but we are not. So we're just going to do this the old fashioned way and just stick with the handoff thing. And um, in the chapter 545 and 546, we will see we are afforded some privileges to go about and alleviate conflicts in the handoff without having to refer to traffic. So here we are. And here's the conversation. San Juan Center, Maya, Santa Domingo Center, handoffs, plural. San Juan Center, Maya, West Maya, JetBlue 1938, flight level 230, windward 808, flight level 190. Yet again, they do not have to give the specific mileage because when we get the CPL, when we get the flight plan from Santa Domingo, micro ERs, we immediately get that flight plan via the whole process and architecture of the NAS. And a tabular list entry will become populated for JetBlue 1938 and windward 808. Then when the targets get around 50 miles from our boundary, microarts will pair the entry, the your tabular list and the squat code, and it will auto acquire it for you. Or you can manually do it yourself via a track start. But just so you know, we will be getting the full data block. So Santa Domingo will not always have to give mileage. So we see those two targets with the abridged version of the phraseology. Now, some things to consider as I previewed 546. Ensure that the target position corresponds with the position given by the transferring controller or that there is an appropriate association between an automated data block and the target being transferred before accepting a handoff. Wonderful. The first paragraph states that just in case if we did not have a full data block associated with it and they were doing a primary target only transfer of radar identification that we are able to deduce and narrow down exactly where that aircraft is at and who that aircraft is to make sure we are completely sure of what we are doing in this coordination process. Now, as I just explained before, with the automatic data exchange and the auto acquisition of micro ERs and the full data block that will be presented to you more often than not, you will understand that as long as you see that the track has paired, which you see there, you have your position control symbol I paired with the JetBlue 1938, same thing with Windward 808, you are golden. Now, remember how I said, I believe it was in the last slide, how 546 and 545 have a lot of items. A lot of them are common sense, but it is a large body of text on all kinds of requirements, caveats, and just notes to take into consideration when you are handing aircraft off. The highlight of this one that you should be worried about that is worthy of being mentioned in this presentation and also for sake of space, issue restrictions that are needed for the aircraft to enter your sector safely before accepting a handoff. As I said, if we were dealing with maybe another San Juan sector, which we really wouldn't be because we'd be handing this aircraft off or pointing them out automatically, well, pointing out manually, obviously, but we would say uh, traffic, Northeast K Talk, TL45, level 230, southeast bound. And we would expect that Santa Domingo would say JetBlue 19 or TL45 traffic observed. And we would go through that whole conversation of what to do. But in this case, if you are quick scanning and you are honing in on your radar associate capabilities, perfecting your scan as we are trying to do, I would make a good judgment call and say, hey, I'm on JetBlue 1938-21. That TL was kind of slow. JetBlue is kind of fast. I'm not really good at judging the convergence here. It's somewhere east of Barincon, east of Mayaguez. I want to be a little safe. These guys look like they're going to get tangled up over Zadav. So JetBlue 1938 request at flight level 210, radar contact, easy enough. And there's that with the R. And windward 808 request control, radar contact. Awesome. Now you're like, Steve, why request control? Take a look at that flight plan and you tell me if it's good. Pausing at it, it looks like that aircraft is going to enter Juliana's airspace or wanting to enter the airspace over JUICE. And we know JUICE is strictly a northwest bound departure route. So this is an opportunity for us to request control and fix it as the D8 controller, which is awesome. It's a pat on your back and you're able to pound that chest and check it out that I did that and I fixed it. I'm going to put it in and all is going to be rectified. So awesome with that. So you request control, so you're able to uh, relay that clearance via the R side. 
request control, and the R. Perfect. Now, like I said, 546 has a, a lot of other caveats that if you're requesting Santa Domingo uh, for control, they should oblige your restrictions. Or if they have restrictions for you, you will oblige them, making sure that the targets are paired up as stated in B. There's a lot of other interesting small things that you will want to read over just to understand. But basically, 95% of the time, your handoffs from Santa Domingo entering your airspace when you are working D8, this is what's going to happen and it's as simple as this. Now we threw in some traffic there and more often than not you won't have traffic or actually Santa Domingo, very competent controller workforce, wonderful people to deal with. They have a great automation system. Their radar range sees well within our airspace and more often than not they see our traffic as well and they are able to help us out and they know what we are going to ask for before we even ask it. They see the conflicts too and they are nice enough to fix that situation before uh, we have to, which is awesome. So they're great to deal with. So you will have a very easy time as long as you get the phraseology down and strip marking and understanding our procedures that this is a pretty awesome interchange and uh, it'll be no big deal as you make your way through the training process and work as a certified controller. So wonderful job. Let's go to another example and talk about a small detail of ADE and how the handoff procedure um, gets affected by some of the uh, quirks, if you will. I'll see you there. So here we are in the confines of sector six. It's been a while since we've been here, so it's nice to be back. And as you know, we share a common boundary with Santa Domingo, so it is very illustrative of what we are trying to learn today. So it's nice to take a break from sector eight. We're there all the time, it seems. And here we are met with a flight plan. Now, we don't have the clock up here, but we can guesstimate that we have been um, sitting here in this flight plan printed out maybe seven, maybe eight minutes ago. And it's Iberia 6500, a flight plan we know well. And you look, everything looks normal until you get to the beacon code. And something looks a little strange. You have two beacon codes associated with this aircraft. And that is actually very helpful because the NAS has your back. There's an added layer of uh, situational awareness that they are bringing to your attention. And here's what it is. 4527 is in reverse shading. That means that that is what we are going to expect the aircraft to appear on. That's the code that they are going to have whenever they are trucking their way towards your airspace. 4652 is what the aircraft beacon code will be or needs to be assigned. That is the code if my little picture box wasn't covering up, that would be what is in the tabular list. 4527, despite the fact that that aircraft is associated with that code in Santa Domingo's airspace, 4527 might be some random Aztec in Tallahassee or maybe a Southwest departing Sarasota going to uh, Chicago Midway or something like that. I don't know. Just it could be anybody else inside of Miami centers or even our center's airspace. This might be a code for a night cargo or a, or a uh, CARE VFR. We don't know that, but the idea is that it is being used somewhere in the national airspace system and it is not available for us to use for Iberia 6500. But guess what? As consolation, it gives us the code that it will need to be on to auto acquire and do all those wonderful things. But the idea that the NAS has printed out two squad codes related and correlated to this particular aircraft they are associated and you do not have to ask for mileage from Santa Domingo because it is clearly stating here, if you know how to interpret this, that hey, this is the aircraft's code that they are on currently and this is the one you have to assign to get the auto acquisition to take place. But without a doubt, 4527, that is Iberia 6500, plain as day, you, hey, San Juan. It may not be for Miami, but for San Juan, 4527 is what Iberia 6500 is on, and you will have to assign the following squawk code. So this presents for you an opportunity to not only call radar contact without having as detailed mileage information relative to a fix, but the conversation would go as such, San Juan Center, Batir, Santa Domingo Center, handoff, San Juan Center, Southwest Chum, Iberia 6500, flight level 380, Iberia 6500, radar contact, squawk 4652. And sure enough, you're able to mark it R, you passed along the request, a restriction, if you will, 
to Santa Domingo to have them enter the airspace on that squawk, and all is absolutely fantastic. You just did a fantastic job as a radar associate to get some uh, major aspects. They may not seem major, and it may not even feel major, but it is a big deal. Not only did you call radar contact on the aircraft, so you guarantee that the aircraft is safe entering your airspace, but you also assigned a beacon code that is going to present a full data block for the R side to see and enjoy and scan for. And that makes their job easier. So yet again, score a pat on the back for you for doing great inside the sector team. And like I said, chapter five and four, five and four, six, if you read that in its entirety, as I said, it will make a lot of common sense on some of those keynotes that they want you to consider before receiving and granting handoffs. So this presentation can easily be supplemented by looking those up for other examples. We tried to get the meat and potatoes, the bare minimum, the basics, what to look for, a little review of ADE, how to deal with Santa Domingo, what the 7110 says, what the LOA says, and just combine it up in a presentation for you to perform uh, swimmingly when it comes to these handoffs. So fantastic job today with that, guys. Really happy for you and really enjoyed it. So let's go to the ending slide for the uh, farewell. Look at that, right on center line and a beautiful day at that on the wonderful island of Puerto Rico. Well, aren't you handy? Well, you are, and you are great at dishing out and dispersing those handoffs like it is no thing at all. Great job receiving and taking handoffs today, guys. Really happy. We got some concepts out of the way. We covered what the 7110 says about things. We tipped that iceberg. We looked at the San Juan and the Santa Domingo LOA, which is brand spanking new at the time of this video's publication. So a lot of new on the cusp of technology, well, relatively new technology, at least for San Juan. So it's all the more exciting. And it's all the more exciting for you to expand your horizons as a radar associate and take on more duties as you're able to do them. It's really exciting. It's a lot of fun and you are going to feel involved and feel rewarding it's going to feel rewarding as you make your way through the training process and hone in on those radar associate skills great job today guys always appreciate the time that we spend together it is beloved and really warms my heart that we get to hang out talk some shop hope to see you guys real soon in the training environment thanks for stopping by remember to keep those attitudes just like your separation ever positive steve here I'll take care and see you guys later.